How can you breathe better to enhance your running performance? What's the secret to never getting lost on a self-navigated ultra? And how can you keep running strong into your 70s and beyond? Find out in my Q&A series, answering all your trail running and ultra running questions. I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running, the trail and ultra running advice and inspiration channel. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and any books or gear that I mention in my videos, you'll find links to in the YouTube description box below. Firstly, a big thank you to all the loyal subscribers who share and retweet my films every week and suggest older videos to people with running questions on social media. A big shout out to Hugo Kramer, Michael Briggs and Paul Simon Robinson from Parks and Pavements for sharing my films. Thank you guys. And thanks to everyone who has very generously supported me in my quest to be silent for the whole day while I run the Derby 10 mile race in memory of my cousin's husband who died from a sudden heart problem during a run last August. The Just Giving link to mental health charity Calm is in the film description below. Thank you for your very generous support. As usual, if you have a gear, training or destination question, type it in the comments below in time for next fortnight's Q&A. So let's answer that first question. Brian Rock wants to know of some 30 to 50 mile ultras that don't require navigation and then a course to improve his navigation skills. So I put this question out to the tribe on Twitter and people have suggested the following no navigation races for you, Brian. Ruth Howie suggests the D33, 33 miles. Jedbra Ultra Marathon, 38 miles. The Highland Fling, which is 53 miles and the Devil of the Highlands which is 43 miles. Mile Junkie recommends the Vale Ultra and Gower Ultra. Peter Savage says the Nomad Ultra is good. Um, it's 50k, 50 miles and a relay. Rich Wood suggests the Dukeries 30 or 40 and Andy Curtis recommends the Lakeland Trails 55k Ultimate Trails Challenge. And to get that navigation sorted here are a few friends of mine who can help you out. In the Lake District, I recommend Joe Faulkner and Stuart Smith from Nav4 Adventure and Charlie Sprozen from Mountain Run, who I did my run scrambling film with here. In Scotland, there are various courses at Glenmore Lodge and in Wales, there's Plazy Brennan Outdoor Centre. In the Peak District, go for Dave Taylor from Fell Running Guide. In Newark, Lincoln and Nottingham, there is Rachel Sheldrake from Mud and Miles. In the South East, you've got Adam Marcinovich from Tri Adventure. And down South, you've got Kerry Rees from Wild Running in Dartmoor. You could also enter a beginner-friendly navigation event to start with, like the Om Light, which I will be at next May. Good luck with the nav, Brian, and maybe see you at the Om Light. Question two. Tim Croft is new to running and after some tips on controlling his breathing. Luckily for you, Tim, I wrote an article on better breathing for runners in Trail Running Magazine with advice from expert Ali Rose, who was physio to British Olympic gold-winning heptathlete Jessica Ennis-Hill. So I unearthed it from my archive to give you her top training tip for better controlled breathing. Ali advises practicing candle breathing for five minutes twice a day. Purse your lips and breathe out towards an imaginary candle for four to six seconds and then pause for one second with your mouth closed. Then breathe back in through your nose for four seconds. I recently joined a choir too and don't worry I'm not going to start singing to you but you can make sure you're breathing from your belly by placing your hands at the base of your ribcage and breathing in so they move apart and back in again. There's also a school of thought that recommends inhaling for three foot strikes and breathing out for two so that you're not always exhaling and relaxing your core muscles on the same footfall. You may also just be running too fast. When I first started running, I had a similar problem. So I made myself run so slowly that I could breathe through my nose until I had built up my fitness. I went very, very slowly for a while, but it definitely worked. I hope that helps you, Tim. Question three, Natalie Bennett wants to know about my experiences with arm warmers as she was grateful for them on the Lakeland 50 this year, putting them on, pulling them down whenever she had to wear her waterproof jacket. She also wants a shoe recommendation, so I'll cover that too. 
arm warmers? That is a great question, Natalie, and it sounds like you use them really intelligently because if you wear a waterproof jacket over bare skin, it can be uncomfortably clammy and even wet feeling next to your skin. This is especially true of lightweight two-layer jackets, which are often used for running, like this, but less of a problem with heavier three-layer jackets, which are often used for hiking and mountaineering because they have a more comfy feeling scrim layer. I'm not going to go into more technical detail now, but if you really want to geek out on the what, why, how of waterproof jackets and breathability, then definitely take a look at this blog post from Outdoors Father Gilad Nachmami who explains it really well. So back to the arm warmers, this is a great idea for days when you can't decide whether it's a long sleeve top day or a t-shirt day. It gives you the option to roll them up and down at will for warmth or to make a waterproof jacket feel less clammy. Uh, you could also use them as a glove or take them off altogether. So personally I use arm warmers on my bike more than running. I don't really know why that is. I tend to just think if I'm in doubt then just wear a long sleeve top and roll the sleeves up because if the sleeves are attached to you you can't lose them but equally you can't them off either so it's it's just really down to personal choice I think. Mine are smart wool arm warmers from a few years ago but Innovate do a pair that I've linked to in the description below if you're interested. Natalie also wants a recommendation for a harder wearing wider fit shoe a bit like the Salomon Sense ride. Well I would say the Terra Ultra G from the new Innovate graphene enhanced rubber range but they're out of stock at the moment so my recommendation is gonna have to be from La Sportiva as I tried some at the weekend and they were wider at the toe than Salomon shoes definitely. I tried a really grippy pair called the Mutant but for something with a similar level of grip to the Salomon Sense ride you'd be more likely looking at the La Sportiva Lycan so I've linked to that in the description below. Question 4. Chuck Coffin says he is a 71 year old ultra runner still running 50k's and wants tips to prolong his joyful days on the trail. Well Chuck at 71 years of age and still cracking out trail marathons I think it's really you who should be giving us the tips but if you want some advice I always think superstar sky runner Emily Forsberg has a good attitude that we can all learn from here. She always says that she wants to run for her whole life not just for the next race so she listens to her body and if she's injured or feels too tired she doesn't race or she adapts her training sessions accordingly. As you can see from her beautiful book Skyrunner she doesn't just run she also takes time to do yoga and eats nutritious whole foods. I also asked for tips from one of the older runners in my club, the Stanford Striders. So Morag, who is 74 and has done four marathons in the past few years, says, keep thinking it's just a number. Run or walk at your own pace and try not to get drawn into going quicker, which is easier said than done. Finally, Morag advises to reverse the numbers of your age. So in Chuck's case, she says you are actually 17. Thanks Morag for that great advice. I know she's got plenty of running years ahead of her and long may your enjoyment of those 50K trail races continue, Chuck. Question five, Jonathan Croy wants advice on Morton's neuroma. I've just looked this up in my favorite physio book, Running Free of Injuries by Paul Hobra, and yikes, that sounds really painful, Jonathan. It's a pain in the forefoot due to the swelling of the nerve between your toe joints, and if you squeeze your toes together with your hand and hear a click, you might have this. There's not a lot you can personally do to rehab this one, so it's important to see a specialist for a proper diagnosis, and a scan is likely needed to confirm the diagnosis, and you may even need a cortisone injection or even surgery so if you think you have it Paul recommends wearing wide-fitting cushioned footwear and avoiding high heels until the diagnosis is confirmed soft tissue work from a massage therapist is also recommended and calf stretches to help reduce the forefoot load and towel grabbing to improve strength I hope your condition improves soon Jonathan that's a nasty one Morton's neuroma Quick fire questions. Alan Gray from Oxfordshire wants a trail marathon or ultra recommending and a running pack. Regular viewers will know that I'm a big fan of the Druids Challenge along the Ridgeway in Alan's neck of the woods. So if you fancy further afield, Alan, then I can recommend the Lakeland Trails Coniston Marathon in June. And while you're there, check out the new Coniston Copper Mines information boards and carved standing stones up near the YHA because they are illustrated by my husband, Steve. As for a running pack, this film here will help you, as will this running packs reviews playlist. So give them a watch and let me know what pack you decide on. 
James Frost wants a recommendation for insoles for road to trail shoes. The best one I suggest for running is the Cedus Cushioning Gel Support, but I've also used these in the past too. Super feet for even more support, though I tend to use these for hiking rather than running. Sole Custom Moldable Insoles. You microwave them and they mold to your feet, but don't microwave them for too long because otherwise you ruin them. Finally, there's Pro Feet, who actually make custom insoles to the shape of your foot after analyzing your specific needs. Links are in the YouTube description below. Giles Surman says, does the drop of a shoe matter? So this is the height differential between the heel and the toe of a shoe. And I think it does for me personally. If you're used to running in shoes with an elevated heel and suddenly you go to zero drop shoes, you risk stretching and straining your calf muscles and Achilles. But I'm going to see running technique expert Shane Benzie at the end of November. So I will ask him this and I'll get back to everyone on the latest scientific thinking. Jeff W wants to strengthen his shin muscles. It sounds like you might have shin splints, Jeff, and top physio Paul Hobra recommends quite a few exercises for that in his book, Running Free of Injuries. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna be covering these exercises in December, but in the meantime, I think Paul's book would definitely be a really good investment for you, Jeff. The link is in the description below. Blowing my mind this fortnight is a suggestion from viewer Mark Dixon, who converted his road shoes into super grippy, mud-loving cross-country shoes by sending them to get resold at Lancashire Sports Repairs. Mind blown. So if you've got a pair of super comfy road shoes and you just wish they were a little bit grippier, consider this option. What a great idea. It's question time. Last week, because I'm running the Derby 10 miles for calm in memory of my cousin's husband, I asked you, do you ever run for charity? Sean Davies does a lot of virtual runs for various charities like the Poppy Run for the Royal British Legion. And Jane Wizened ran for the National Autistic Society charity and her twin boys, who are autistic, joined her for a 5K of it, which she says was really amazing because they find it so hard. So that's fantastic charity running, guys. Keep up the great fundraising. So still sort of on the subject of charity and crowdfunding, my question for you this week is, what do you think about me going on Patreon? And if yes, what perks would you most be excited about receiving from Wild Ginger Running? So I've been thinking about this for a while now as a way to support this YouTube channel because YouTube adverts and sales from my affiliate links only bring a very small amount of funding. So I still spend a lot of time writing for magazines and websites to pay my mortgage and my bills and to travel to report on races. So I'd love to go full time on this channel with better quality camera kit. And I'd love to have the time and the funds to interview more top trail running athletes, broadcast live from more exciting events, edit my Cape Wrath Ultra film, get some more group gear tests created like my popular running packs one and set up monthly competitions for you guys to win the kit that I'm testing. What do you think? Are you a patron of other running YouTube channels like the Ginger Runner, the Run Experience or I Run Far for example? What kind of patron perks would you be most excited about receiving from me here at Wild Ginger Running? I'd be really interested to hear what you think, um, so type your answers in the YouTube comments below and we'll see what everyone thinks in next week's Q&A. So keep those trail and ultra running questions coming in too and I'll answer as many as I can in my next fortnightly Q&A film. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And visit my blog if you want a Wild Ginger Running t-shirt in time for Christmas. Thanks for watching, enjoy your next run and I'll see you on the trails.